everybody, and welcome to the Historical Sew Along series, where we'll take you through the ins and outs of some simple historical sewing projects to build up your wardrobe and your hand skills. Maybe even both at the same time. From prep work to finished product, we'll do it together, following step-by-step instructions with some tips and tricks sprinkled in along the way. This series is meant for all skill levels, but it is especially nice for beginners to build confidence while building a solid toolkit of techniques. So feel free to pause, rewind, rewatch, and fast forward to whichever parts you need as many times as necessary. So with all of that said, let's get to the good stuff. Today's video is our third and final installment in our Apron Sew Along series. So if you missed parts one and two, check the description below for the links to get caught up. You should have your hemmed apron panel with gathering stitches across the top, so once you've grabbed that and the rest of your supplies, let's get started. All right, last time I promised you that we would be gathering our aprons today, and so in order to gather that panel down to your finished waist measurement, we're gonna need to know how wide the finished gathered length should be. If you remember back in part one, we had you cut a waistband from your fabric. Uh, and so if you did that, you can simply use that waistband for this section of the tutorial. If you are binding your apron waist with tape, find that string from part one that we told you to set aside for later. You marked it with a pin to illustrate that length. And we're gonna use that for the next step. So whether you're using your fabric piece or your string, either one of those, we just wanna go ahead and mark our half and quarter points on them, just the same way that we did with our petticoat waist tape. So fold them in half, mark the center, uh, fold them again, mark those quarter points. Next, we need to match our quarters from our apron panel to that of our waist length. So either your fabric strip or your string. You'll recall we did this with our petticoats too. Once your quarter points are secured, we will go section by section, so quarter by quarter. And for each one, what we're going to do is release the gathering tails from the pin and then gently draw up the fabric along the running stitches. And we're gonna do this until the length of the threads match the length of our quartered section on our strip or string. Once that's done, rewrap the tails around the pin so that the length doesn't wiggle around on us. Do this for each quarter of our panel. Don't worry so much about neatness at first. Just make sure that the lengths of the gathered quarters match the quartered lengths of our strip or our string. Once our panel is gathered, then we'll go back to each section and tidy up the gathers, spacing them evenly over the section, making sure that there aren't any that are really bunched up or are not laying nicely. So once our gathers are neat and tidy, we're ready to move on. And for those of you using a tape binding, we're gonna go ahead and talk about that first. So we'll need to measure for our waist tape and we can use our string method for that, just like we did for the pocket and the petticoat projects. So take a string or tape, tie it around your waist, mark or cut the ends of the tie so that they are even and not too long untie your string and then use that length to mark or measure out your tape. If you're using a fabric binding on the top of your apron, you're gonna wanna do the same thing, but instead of cutting your tape to the full length of your waist measure with ties, you'll want to actually subtract the length of your fabric binding from the total length of your finished tape. Now to attach a tape binding, you are going to locate the center of your tape and then match this to the center of your apron. Work your way out to the sides and then temporarily secure your tape to the apron, however you wanna do that. Then hem down the front of the tape. Then just like with our petticoats and our pockets, fold the tape over to encase the raw edge and hem down the binding to the back.
Stop there if you're using the tape as this next part doesn't apply to you. This is only if you're doing a fabric binding now. So if you are using a fabric binding for the waist, turn under your edges of your strip of fabric. We recommend basting here for ease as well. Let's be honest, we recommend basting almost everything, so that's probably not a surprise. Find the center of the length of your strip of fabric and match it to the center of your apron panel. Then work your way out to the edges to temporarily secure your binding as well. As you did with the tape, hem the front of your binding to the apron, then fold the binding over to encase the raw edge of the top and hem down the binding to the back. You will notice that you now have little openings on the sides of your apron binding, and you're also missing waist ties. So take that tape that you measured out earlier, fold it in half, and then cut it at that halfway point. We'll then insert these two pieces of tape into the two open ends of our binding to create our waist ties. Go ahead and slip the raw edge into the opening with about a half to three quarters of an inch inside of the binding. Then hem the binding to the tape on both sides. You can go through all layers here if you can, and that'll just reinforce your ties. And you're gonna do this on both sides of the apron panel so that you have a tie on either end. Now this next bit is for both methods. So if you've been with us for the pocket and the petticoat, you can probably guess what's next. Yes, you are right. We are going to finish the edge of our apron ties by turning that edge under twice and then hemming. And we're done. So now your next step is to enjoy your finished hand-sewn apron and wear it with pride, even if it's only around the house for now. In fact, we'd love to see what you made, so head over to our Facebook or Instagram and share some pictures of your beautiful creations. Be sure to use the hashtag showyouraprons so we can see your amazing work. And we know it's amazing because you have all been so amazing through this whole endeavor and we appreciate it so much. So friends, that's it for now, but we do promise that we will be back with more Sew Along adventures in just a few short weeks, so make sure that you have subscribed to our channel to get notifications and updates when we go live or when we post a new video. But promise us two things. You'll keep those needles sewing, and more importantly, you're gonna keep your hearts fierce because we truly believe that we're better together and if we hang tight and we support one another, we can do this. But before we leave you, here's a few more pets for your enjoyment and honestly for ours too.